Here she goes. Holy moly, this thing is scary. Four cans of John Smith's lined up over my shoulder. I'm gonna see if I can shoot these with a nail gun. Here goes, folks. See if we can do this. <laughs> Here we go. Success. A friend of mine said, can you repair my nail gun? <laughs> Apparently, a whole load of smoke came out of it at some point. Not sure why. Well, let's get into it. First things first, let's empty it of nails. That was relatively easy. Let's get all of these screws undone. So, this is all quite interesting here. If you remove this bit, which is the pressure sensitive section that you push against the wall when you pop the nail in, it shows us how this mechanism works. And what we've got here is we've got a bar and that bar moves backwards and forwards. That's the bar that shoots the nail. And then we have here a little uh, holder that effectively holds the nail in place. And when the bar moves forwards, it slides over the top of that holder. I'll see if I can show you this a bit better. So the nail or the pin sits in this holding mechanism and this bar slides over the top of there and hammers that nail home. Quite an interesting mechanism. So with some careful persuasion, I've now been able to remove the nail cartridge from the front of the nail gun. And now we should be able to open the nail gun. Right. Interesting. So this is quite interesting. It's just a motor uh, that drives a compressor. And when the compressor achieves its maximum capacity, it fires out that rod there and that rod smacks the nail into place. Anyway, there's some complicated circuitry in here. I've immediately found out where the smoke has come from. If you look at this device here, uh, it looks like a FET. If you look at the front of it, you can see a massive, great big hole in it there where the magic smoke has escaped from the machine. So it looks as though we're going to have to buy a replacement, uh, one of these, whatever it might happen to be. Now, the other thing that I'm also very nervous about is on the back of this board here, there are a lot of small components and they normally, when you get those kinds of currents going through something, you end up with um, a faulty PCB in multiple places, not just one. This unit may be completely cream crackered. Now, one thing we could do is we could rip all the gubbins out of here and make this completely unsafe and quite literally uh, just connect those wires <laughs> through uh, uh, the micro switch to the battery terminals here. That would be indeed very dubious of me uh, because it would remove all of the safety features from this unit. But I believe we could still actually use the unit like that. Epic news, folks. I have been given permission <laughs> to remove all of the safety features <laughs> from this nail gun. Let's have a quick look. What have we got then? Well, we've got a battery connector down here. Uh, so we need to adapt that for this type of battery because this is an American version of a PowerShare battery, which is completely different to a European version of a PowerShare battery. So that's really annoying. Um, and, and that's ultimately why this ended up getting blown up because somebody tried to then adapt it and they got the polarity wrong and that took out this end channel MOSFET here on the PCB. We are gonna rip the entire PCB out of this. So um, 
if we follow, in fact, if we just literally pull out the main mechanism, which is this bit here, the only thing that we actually need to make this operate is to rotate that motor. Two cables, dead easy. Okay, let's have a look. What else have we got in here? Um, so we have here what looks like a little thermal sense PCB. So just a couple of little transistors on there. And that guy will be used to uh, check whether or not uh, things are overheating. Uh, here we have a micro switch, which is the trigger micro switch. So we'll build that back in. Um, we've got some LEDs up here to light where you're shooting your nail. Don't need that. So up here we've got a jam detection system. We've got a couple of LEDs, one transmitting infrared and the other one receiving infrared. And when something sits in between those LEDs, it's basically telling the system, it's telling that control PCB that there's a problem, something is jammed. Uh, then the other thing that we have here is a little tiny micro switch. And what that micro switch does is when this is shoved up against a wall, that little plunger, hopefully you can see that little plunger popping out and, and back there. And what that micro switch does there is it tells the system that uh, it's pushed up against a piece of wood and it's safe to fire the gun. <laughs> so we are quite literally going to rip all of those safety features out of this gun and we're going to make this gun very unsafe. Um... <laughs> And then we're going to take it out in the garden and see if we can shoot stuff. <laughs> okay. So there we have it. That is the firing mechanism right there. So there it is, folks. Oh, there we go. All of that control circuitry getting chucked out. All right, we have quite literally removed everything. I've even removed the battery connector. I'm going to replace that with a 3D printed battery connector. So there it is. This can go back in place. And what we can do at this point is we can, so we can wire up the switch here and fit that in place there we go something like that so that we can turn on the motor manually all right just a few solder connections to be made here so uh, I'm gonna do a reasonable job of it chuck a bit of solder on stuff like you do I'm gonna wire this micro switch in so uh, so we'll go ahead and we will get this all wired up yeah so there we go just a little bit of heat shrink on here but uh, but ultimately ultimately this thing should be in a great shape and scarily dangerous <laughs> it really is as simple as that folks this is one of my battery adapters here and ultimately all I've done is I've just wired that battery adapter directly to the motor with the micro switch in between that's it that's all we've got we should be able to dry fire this should we do it it might be a bit scary I've plugged in a battery are we ready for this fingers crossed it doesn't all go pear-shaped <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. That. That is scary. Genuinely scary. I am not joking. This is just going to be epic. Okay, time to put all of this lot back together now. There's lots of parts in various different places on my table. So uh, we'll figure out this jigsaw. We'll get it all put back together. We'll mount this. We'll glue this and mount this on the bottom of it. And we'll take it for a test drive. 
I know, nail gun all reassembled. And what we have to do is just glue this battery adapter, which amazingly fits nicely in place on the bottom of here so that we can now fit our power share batteries. This is gonna be lethal. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be epic. I've modified a nail gun, special battery adapter, special battery, removed all the safety features. Here she goes. <laughs> Multifire. Holy moly, this thing is scary. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's use it for its intended purpose. Let's stuff a nail in something and see what happens. Oh my goodness. Can you see that just there? I mean, that is deep. Bearing in mind, these nails are quite monstrous. <laughs> I keep finding nails kicking around the garden from where I've been shooting this thing. So the only way to make this safe is to remove the battery. And then when you click the trigger, nothing will happen. Genuinely, don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> it's a bit dangerous. Always make sure you've got on your personal protective equipment as well. Don't be a silly boy like me. All right, thanks for watching. Take care, have a wonderful week and weekend, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and beers, people. Bye for now. Here she goes. This thing is scary. Four cans of John Smith's lined up over my shoulder. I'm gonna see if I can shoot these with a nail gun. Here goes, folks. See if we can do this. <laughs> Here we go.